So yeah, welcome back to those who've been here before, and welcome to anyone new. And yeah, this is gonna be just like a commentary style type video, and like commentary slash discussion type of thing, where probably my second video where I've done something like this, my first one was probably um, the 2021 game of the year discussion, where I was kind of discussing <clears throat> all the contenders be it uh, Ratchet and Clank, It Takes Two, Deathloop, that kind of thing, Metroid. So in this one, I'm probably just going to have like a little mini discussion, you know, to discuss where 2022 stands right now in gaming and the games that have come out so far. You may have seen some of them on my channel as playthroughs. And we know normally the first few months of a new year are always kind of slow in gaming, where you get mostly a few good releases scheduled well and then usually it's like the backlogs of uh, developers that didn't meet the December deadlines that usually release uh, early year but this year it's been fucking awesome and as we predicted last year 2022 is gonna be like a hard-hitting year like a 2018 that type of thing like a 2020 even where there's a lot of um, especially first party uh, games whether it's Sony or Xbox or whatever and a lot of good um, third party games across all the platforms as well so yeah I think well now in 2022 we're slowly seeing you know the COVID bottleneck loosening up studios are kind of getting back to full capacity even though most are still like working remotely and all of that and then you have you know Bandai Namco and Sony dropping some big boy games this year and uh, yeah so let's see so far what have we had hmm. we've had nobody saves the world we've had rainbow six extraction we've had uncharted um, legacy of thieves edition which was a remaster We've had Pokemon Legends Arceus. Uh, we've had the Oli Oli World. Uh, Sifu. That was a big boy game. And you know, with Sifu, I kind of really enjoyed the way they did this. And again, apologies for my mic. I'm just using a, I don't have an actual microphone to record yet. So I just use a regular headset mic. Um, I think you know sifu doesn't really have a plot other than you know the collection of kung fu tropes and the gameplay is just sucks you right in even if you don't care for the story or you know whether you're in there for the story that kind of thing it's just one of those games that you can let let loose and kick back and you know just go ham in it and i really enjoyed playing that one i only did i think i did three videos on my channel where it was just highlights of some of the early boss fights but yeah Sifu is one of those games that you can just kick back and learn and get better with the difficulty it doesn't hold your hand kind of thing and you sort of it's got good replayability because you're trying to you know beat the game at a certain age reach certain levels at a certain age that kind of thing and then learn new combos and tricks and everything and it's just sort of you know you can aimlessly keep playing that game and time just flies by and you won't even notice uh, we also had Total War, Warhammer drop, and then Horizon Forbidden West, that's been a big boy drop again. And I think what Guerrilla Games really did with this game, they really built on a lot of things that people complained about in the first game and they kind of worked on it. The, it's still got a little, you know, ironing out to do, especially with like the clipping and climbing and that kind of thing, but probably the best looking open world that's dropped so far i hesitate to say ever because that i think that title still goes to red dead 2 but so far like this year nothing has really come close even like with elden ring being you know the big release it was uh taking a souls game into an open world genre and still horizon visually horizon like just sucks you into 
photo mode, you know, <laughs> throughout the game. You actually get so sidetracked just enjoying the open world that you forget you're actually, you know, trying to play the game. But they really did well with, like, mechanics like with the paraglider and all the new tools they kind of added in. And the improved climbing mechanic, that's been, like, useful, it's been fun. And then Aloy's got the animation thing she does with the, I forgot what they call it. Like her special skill activation and that kind of thing. But again, it's one of those where you don't really get sucked into the story as much as you would with like, you know, your God of Wars, that kind of thing. But you still just enjoy the open world. And it's an easy, I would say game of the year contender. But I think like, again, Horizon sort of has its its niche kind of like you know like with the spider-mans and that kind of thing where it's going to be a really good game but it's not gonna get as much attention as you know like your elden rings and everything else but uh and the swimming mechanics that was also a fun new addition to this game and that's really been interesting being able to just explore underwater with uh, aloy then we move on to elden ring again from software Again, we know them with Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Sekiro, all those good, uh, Demon Souls, <laughs> all those good punishing Souls genre games. And I think the one good thing they did with Elden Ring, because you have a lot of people who've never actually played um, a Souls game before jumping onto Elden Ring, which I like to see. Uh, so I'm, I'm personally not like a, you know, a Souls game player. I've played uh demon souls i played sekiro and i played bloodborne and i never finished sekiro and i never finished demon souls i only finished bloodborne so i kind of enjoy those games but for me it's always you know like a late side dish so like a game like elden ring i would only get you know like on discount in like a december or something like that and really go through it taking my time at my own pace i'm not really bothered about it right now on like an early launch type of thing but as I was saying, I really respect the fact that they managed to take, you know, the linear aspect from the Souls game that they had and drop it into an open world that actually looks good. And this is the first time that you can actually say, you know, a Souls game looks beautiful, which is something that you could never say about all these previous Souls titles in terms of visuals because they always looked visually amazing especially with all the different boss designs and everything but it always you know it was always like a dark gringy like gray black kind of you know just like a a swampy kind of world where now you take it into the open world genre and you get to see all these different uh terrains and then you don't have to fight the bosses in like a linear manner as such you can kind of you know go get some runes, do your own thing, fight bosses on your own time kind of thing. So it makes it really friendly for people that have never played Souls games, which I kind of like because they still don't babysit you. You know, they don't hold your hand with the shit, but it has opened up. Like I've seen a lot of people who had zero interest <laughs> in Souls games. I've seen them picking up Elden Ring. So I'd say that's a big win for them. And then we also had Dying Light 2 from Techland, which was again... An improvement on the initial Dying Light. It did have a hot and cold reception. Because a lot of people liked the direction they took in Dying Light 2. But also a lot of people didn't really enjoy the somewhat changed mechanics and that kind of thing. <clears throat> but again, that's always debatable with games. Like, you know how it goes. You'll please some people and you'll piss off <laughs> some other people. But... I guess as long as the fact that it was an okay release, it wasn't buggy and all that and broken and that type of thing at launch. So it's one of them ones. And I think so far that's what we've got. Oh, Ghostwire Tokyo. That's another one. And I've been enjoying that take. Um, that one was done by Tango Gameworks. There we go. And uh, I'm what? I think I'm in chapter three now. Yeah, I've done the first two chapters with uh, Akito and KK exploring Tokyo and the uh, Shibuya district. I think I'm saying it. I used to say Shibuya, but in the game they say Shibuya, so I presume that's how it's said. But yeah, it's been a really fun take on... It's like a sem it's still an action-adventure game, but with like the horror elements uh, into it and the different fighting mechanics where rather than having a gun, you're kind of using uh, Kage's powers 
with uh, through Akito because since uh, Akito is the the body host I guess in this game and it's still just the same you know mechanics of if you had like a pistol shotgun rifle kind of thing just divided into you know superpowers on your hands kind of thing so that's been pretty interesting and engaging I kind of like how it's gone and then we also had Destiny 2 the Witch Queen DLC dropped uh, Lost Ark also dropped this year. What else? What else? What else am I forgetting about? Dying Light 2 I already brought up. Pokemon I brought up. Uh, yeah, I think so far in 2022 that's about it. And now we're kind of... Oh, Gran Turismo 7 again. That one was a bit a visually stunning game. But again, with the whole online aspect. That's been a really hot topic with them. Um, <clears throat> personally, I'm still waiting for Forspoken to drop. That one got delayed. It was supposed to drop in May. I think it's been delayed to like October thereabouts. That looks really good uh, from Square Enix. And um, then we have God of War Ragnarok. <coughs> Santa Monica Studios as usual. That's also dropping, I think, in Q4. Uh, what else do we have coming up? Offhand, I think. That's what I'm thinking of offhand. Let's see. Mm. Oh, GTA 5, but that was the re release of the re release of the re release. <laughs> We won't even talk about that one. <laughs> um, what else am I thinking of? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I was going to talk about The Devil in Me. Another entry from Dark Pictures Anthology. Developed by Supermassive Games. That That's another one that I'm personally waiting for. And they also recently announced The Quarry. Out of nowhere. And that drops before The Devil in Me. So that's actually going to be interesting to see. Because especially. And I think that drops in June. Not, I'm not sure where in June, but that's going to be a really good, um, a little double year drop for, you know, the horror genre fans, decision-based games fans, you know, we'll see who I can keep alive and shit, as usual. Um, and, um, what's it called again? Supermassive really did well after House of Ashes. I think House of Ashes was probably their most complete release since Until Dawn. And we know Until Dawn had the big Sony budget backing. So, of course, it was going to be bigger than the other anthology games. But House of Ashes was a real good improvement on what they were doing. Because, again, they still make really good games. But for, like, a yearly type release, it was a really good improvement. So, I will be looking forward to The Devil in Me. Because that's the first time that we're going to be dealing with um, a serial killer type of threat. Rather than a supernatural, you know, monster type threat. I feel like... Yeah, serial killers are a lot scary and creepier because we know <coughs> excuse me we know how sick and demented <laughs> humans can be so personally i've always feared that threat more than you know the vampires and the wendigos and that kind of thing and then in the quarry i think it's going to be like werewolves or whatever some summer camp style thing so the quarry looks really good and that one i think is being done by 2k so it'll be interesting to see, well, super massive through 2K. So it's going to be interesting to see how that one goes. And then I think for 2022, that'll be about it. Yeah, I think God of War closes off the big releases. Yeah, all the, the Star Wars and that kind of thing. I think they've all been pushed to 2023 or unannounced so far. But yeah, that's kind of what I'm sort of expecting, waiting for in gaming. Oh, there's also Saints Row. That's going to be coming as well. But yeah, um, I hope the video wasn't too, you know, like jumbled and stuff. And the mic quality is also very hit and miss for me. And I think for this video, I'm going to have probably Red Dead gameplay in the background. Just, you know, to have an ambiance in there. But, you know, let me know what games you guys are looking forward to. Games that you're enjoying. Thus far, I know I was mostly discussing console games, because I am a console gamer, but I do enjoy, you know, watching 
since I have to kind of watch uh, when it comes to PC games and that sort of thing, since I can't play them on my own, because I do have a PC setup at home, but it's not a, a gaming setup, it's a work setup, so it's one of them ones, one day we'll get a gaming PC. Um, but yeah, let me know what games you guys are looking forward to, how you think 2022 has gone so far, what you've liked and what you haven't liked about the releases that have dropped so far. I think February was one of the best months we've seen in a while with that whole, you know, seafood. And again, there's a lot more games that dropped, but I am just mentioning the main ones that I was sort of looking at and interested in. I think Sifu, uh, Horizon, Dying Light 2, and Elden Ring was a pretty damn good lineup but yeah so again i don't make these styles of videos often so it's kind of a new thing to me because i prefer you know just having these discussions whilst i'm playing like a playthrough or that type of thing but i've actually opted not to get too talkative on my playthrough so i sort of let the game immerse a lot more and then you know i'll chime in and comment when i need to Oh, and I wanted to touch on the channel format again. Thank you for all the subs. I think we hit 3,000. Um, when was it? A week ago, I think, now, if I'm not mistaken. Right after we hit 1K as well. Okay. So again, thank you for the subs. I think a lot of people were coming in from all the, the shorts and everything. So again, welcome if you're new. Welcome back if you've been here before. And again, thank you always for the support. But yeah, so I'm just going to keep, you know, keep the channel as is. Like I mentioned, I just use the channel, you know, to showcase my passion for gaming and discussions. I'm not really coherent at sometimes explaining some of these things. So, you know, do bear with me. But um, I'm probably going to start doing more of these style videos, but keep them, you know, shorter and sweeter. Mm -hmm. Under like 15 minutes, not getting them too long and everything because, you know. It's hard for people to engage again when it's still just like a newer style video. Um, but I do enjoy like hearing people's thoughts and comments. And you'll notice, you'll always see me in the comments replying and, you know, discussing with people whenever it's like an interesting point. But yeah, I'm probably going to do more videos like this, maybe twice a month or something like that. I'm thinking maybe every second Monday yeah, in a month, I'll probably just do like a breakdown or we can discuss like gaming news and that kind of thing. Because I do also read up a lot on that, so that would be interesting to also hear people's discussions and thoughts and opinions. And then I'll still be dropping the regular videos, but it's going to sort of change. Because I've been doing like a Dying Light video every day at 11 a.m. But that ends, I think, today. The finale should be premiering today for that. And then, so it's only going to be Ghostwire Tokyo and Horizon left. And those ones I do live, so those ones will sort of come on weekends when I get to live stream. And then the Siege videos as well. Again, I just play Siege on the side for fun, so I'll probably keep doing those uh, Rainbow Six cut-ups. And FIFA as well for pro clubs, I'll keep doing those cut-ups and keep just dropping them midweek. Uh, but I will try and always keep them short, like under 20 minutes kind of thing if I can. Unless it's like a really long type of match, that sort of thing. But yeah, just let me know what you think. Again, feel free to always critique. Uh, I only get better by knowing what people want to discuss and like what kind of videos people would enjoy hearing from me. Even like I was also thinking about doing like lore videos. Because I've seen a lot of people commenting on like the Ghost of Tsushima playthrough, Detroit playthrough, that kind of thing. And there's always, like, good discussions in the comments. So, like, if people are interested in knowing, like, the lore of some of that stuff, uh, like with the voice actors, the writers, and that kind of thing, I'm also into that. So I can, you know, explain and discuss that. Even though I waffle a lot. I waffle a hell of a lot. But I'm still just getting used to, you know, talking to the, the mic kind of thing. So we'll see how it goes. Again, thank you for tuning in. And I'll catch you guys next time.